What is the most NSFW thing you've witnessed at a party? When I was still in college, I was at a sorority party with my then girlfriend. A woman, probably a freshman, was on the floor, butt up, pants and underwear to her ankles, funnel in her butt and people were pouring shots into her butthole. I was too drunk, high, and stupid back then to realize this could have easily unalived her, and I just left the room with my GF. Had this happened today, I definitely would intervene, but back then I was just like, whoa, dude. She lived, so it's all good. Yep, this is NSFW from every possible definition. By the way, anyone who's thinking of doing this butt funneling or whatever, don't. It bypasses the parts of your body that are supposed to process liquor, so you just get the full effects and it's really harmful. Don't do it. It's not worth it. Story 2. Watched a guy lose at beer pong and get mad enough that he turned around and punched the first thing he could lay his hands on, which turned out to be a window. In the movies, you break a window, you don't get hurt. In real life, if you slam your fist through a window, the falling glass cuts you so deep you practically amputate your own hand. There was so much blood that we thought that was what happened. We thought he had sliced his hand off. One of the sober partiers rushed him to the hospital while the rest of us just left because the scene involved so much blood and gore that none of us wanted to even party anymore. He ended up okay. Has a gnarly scar for the rest of his life, but at least he didn't actually lose his hand. Story 3. At a party in a huge house on the lake that had a second living room upstairs. Walking up the stairs, I can hear all this commotion going on. As I enter the room, there's this guy smashing a chick on the couch, doggy style, right there in front of everyone. He was getting high fives from other guys, and people were just standing around watching and cheering. Well, a few years later, I get married. And at Thanksgiving dinner with my in-laws, my brother-in-law brings in his new girlfriend to meet the family. You guessed it, it was her. Same girl that was getting smashed on the couch. Well, he ended up getting married to this girl, and now, every time I see them at a family get-together, all I can see is the image from that night at the lake. This is, like, the best secret to have. Because you know you can't really tell anyone, nor should you, by the way. And you shouldn't threaten them with it either, I'm not saying that. I just mean, like, it's a hilarious secret, like, you see them, and in your head you giggle a bit or laugh every time. And no one else will ever know why, except for the other people who were there that night. Story 4. Road tripped to Alabama with my college roommate so he can win his ex's heart back. It was a fun, drunk, weak party hopping. One frat party we went to was outdoors and we were already wasted before getting there. My roommate and his ex were making out and I told them to get a room. They just vanished into the night and left me alone to talk to this dude from New York who looked just like Christian Bale, or at least according to my drunk brain. I got his number for some reason and went looking for my roommate. Next thing I know, a group of girls are screaming like they found a dead body. Behind a truck was my roommate and his lady going at it doggy style while he is flexing behind her to all of the people now staring at them. They were kicked out, which meant I was also kicked out. I still have Christian Bale's number in my phone. Story 5. We were throwing a house party for one of our roommates that was turning 21. Said birthday boy was wasted fairly early in the night, and was placed in the bathtub with the curtain drawn. Their logic was that he could sleep and if he threw up he would be in the tub. A couple hours later, this girl shows up. She was a friend of a friend, 18, maybe 5 foot tall, super white girl, who just got off of her shift at Twin Peaks. As the mostly sober host, I welcomed her and went outside to have a cigarette. Maybe 15 minutes later, I returned inside to find the tiny white girl on the floor puking into a trash can. Well, that escalated quickly, but not particularly shocking considering her size. The start of the weirdness was that she was conversing with my friend Daniel in fluent Spanish. Oh, okay, so she speaks Spanish. A little surprising, but whatever. So between heaves, Daniel and I help her to the bathroom to pray to the porcelain god. She wants to shut the bathroom door, and I say, sure, but not to lock the door so we can get in there if she passes out, just to make sure she doesn't, you know, die. Of course, as soon as she goes in, she locks the door. What we had forgotten was that the birthday boy was asleep in the tub. He was awoken by what he describes as the worst smelling crap he had ever smelled in his life. Not wanting to let this random girl know he was hiding in the bathtub, he did his best to keep quiet through the gagging. Tiny girl had diarrhea so rank that she decided she was too embarrassed to face the party. Her solution? Climb out the tiny bathroom window. When we got the door unlocked and went in, we found her halfway out the window, with her crap-covered thong on the floor, and birthday boy pale and sweating in the tub after his unwanted birthday surprise. She slept on one side of the couch with a female friend to watch over her. The next morning, she claimed to not remember a thing, and swears that she doesn't know a word of Spanish. I don't know what y'all were partaking in that night, but if it teaches you Spanish, I'm kinda down. I'm not usually a huge party guy, but that sounds crazy. Seriously though, unlucky birthday surprise for the birthday boy. Kinda props to him for staying in the bathtub though with the curtain drawn just to not cause a problem. 
because I'm sure she would be really freaked out if all of a sudden he popped out of the tub. That's uh, a bit suspicious. Story 6. Working at a pub hosting a gypsy slash traveler christening. All was well. The head of the family, male slash father of the child, began the day by handing me a thousand pounds in cash for the bar, whilst telling me, one, if there were any trouble I should speak to him first, and two, no one was allowed to spend money, and when the cash ran out I should ask him for more. The party was going okay. On rule one, a teenage male guest groped my 17-year-old waitress. I informed family and said teenager returns 10 minutes later with a slowly blackening eye and a profuse apology to my waitress, who soldiered on like a champ. The party is drawing to a close, and family head comes to me with 200 pounds in cash for me, because we didn't treat his family like gypsies as most people do. As he, wife, and Chris and child are preparing to leave, I hear him shout at his wife and look up in time to see him punch her to the side of the head. She staggers and I manage to make it to the staggering wife. I grab the baby and wife then falls to the floor. Baby gets passed to another female family member whilst I grab the teenage waitress and proceed to hide slash stand behind the bar whilst a Wild West saloon-style brawl commences. There were about 50 to 60 men, women, and children involved in this brawl. Memorable moments include a woman hitting the family head with a chair, and a child who couldn't have been more than 10 years old, gleefully throwing glass bottles at random into the crowd whilst giggling. Several police ride vans arrive and clear the travelers out. Those that can't flee are arrested, and I had to work late to clean up the mess. The worst part is the owner of the bar witnessed it all on security camera, sent his wife upstairs to see what was going on, and proceeded to lock the steel-reinforced office door after she left to protect himself. This all happened in daylight during an otherwise quiet Sunday afternoon. Ah uh, yes, I'm so glad you treated our people so well. Let us prove to you how great we are. And proceed to have a full-out brawl. Yep, that's, uh, it's a good look. Very unfortunate. For the rest of traveling people, I mean. It just kind of sounds like this group of people was just like that. What can you do? Story 7. Had an outside party at an old house of mine where Rando passed out on his side in the middle of the driveway. The eight or so friends he'd come with all let him sleep and the party continued around him. Eventually, someone yells my name and points at the passed out fella, who's managed to get his dong out and start peeing while still on his side. At this point, everyone outside has stopped what they were doing to gasp at this turn of events. After a while, he began to slowly lean backwards and the arc of pee gradually goes high higher and higher into the air. Finally, he makes it all the way onto his back and the angle of his pecker is just right so that the remaining pee hits him right between the eyes. Half the party was disgusted and unimpressed, but the rest had plenty to bond over for the rest of the night. Story 8. Some chick was having a house party while her parents were out of town and she was in her teens. Invited like half the school. She was a typical stuck-up jerk that didn't really have any real friends, just a bunch of fake ones. Anyway, this one guy's having a good time being reasonable and she doesn't like him, so she has a bunch of people just start treating him like crap. He then gets told he has to leave and he's like, I gotta use the bathroom first. And currently all of the bathrooms are occupied. So she tells him to leave, he cannot use the washroom. The dude then said, oh, there's a urinal here. And proceeds to punch a hole in the wall and pees in it. Ooh, those parents are not going to be too happy about this party, are they? Why can't these people just throw a party, but like, not trash everything? I feel like that would end up better, no? It would get you more friends and probably better liked at school. And your parents wouldn't hate you. But no, we just gotta go for the worst possible outcome. Story 9. I didn't personally witness it, but was told about it the next day. A sorority would have their holiday party at our banquet hall every year. Most of the time, someone would get too drunk and puke in the bathroom or outside. This one time, a waitress saw a girl sitting on a guy's lap halfway through the party. She was slowly moving up and down, drawing little attention from the drunken crowd. The waitress thought they were just hooking up and left them alone, until she went to water glasses and clear tables. Her underwear was on the floor, and her skirt was hiked up while she bounced with no self-awareness on where she was. The captain of the party quickly intervened and told them they had to leave. The girls in charge of the group apologized, but in the end, they were banned from having another event at the banquet hall. Another time, there was a birthday party or a christening, I forget which. Some lady thought it was a good idea to change her baby's diaper on the table in the middle of the party. She was told that the restroom had a changing table, but instead proceeded with changing the poopy diaper and threw the diaper under the table. We tossed the linen after that party was over. I feel like everyone would do well with just one food safe course in their lifetime. Because I... I don't know, maybe this isn't even food safe, that's just like common sense, right? That is not sanitary in any way. Oh god. Oh, it's disgusting. I was I'm talking about the second one, by the way. The first one is also unsanitary, but not that bad. 
Mostly just, I don't know, weird. Story 10. We were at a house party where everyone was pretty smashed when someone pulled out the host's tiny kitten from the closed off room it was in. It got passed around from person to person just having the ever-loving crap petted out of it. I wasn't around when it happened, so I don't know if the kitten was just rough handled so badly its neck was broken or if it died of stress or was dropped. But at one part of the night, a girl started screaming that the kitten was dead. The worst part was the host was screaming slash crying, but there were still a bunch of guys around her trying to convince her to let them keep going with the party. I think it should be a pretty safe rule that if anything dies during a party, the party stops. That seems like a pretty safe way to do things. That is a very unfortunate way for a kitten to go. It must have been incredibly stressed. I feel very bad for that animal and very bad for the host. Story 11. Apart from the normal banging drugs and alcohol, I've seen girl do blow off another guy's dong and then blow him while he made out with a second girl. I've seen a girl steal the Rock Band game's drumstick and use it as a fake dong in the bathroom. Was a nice mystery for the 10 minutes we were looking for it. Saw a 16 year old, I was also 16, flash a couple of college goers. We were on a university campus and almost got them to have a trio with her. Before I told them her age, that was the fastest I have ever seen two men run away from a trio. Saw a dad using two flashlights and trying to turn the party rave-like. We were 15 and his mother was the at-the-door bouncer. Next to the bathroom with vomit on the ground, I saw a guy pull out a girl's tampon and then eat her out. Saw him an hour later with blood visibly on his face. During a fight, a guy hit the other dude with a baseball-like item. Not sure what it's called in English. Closest word I can think of is cudgel. The guy was in a coma for two weeks. Finally, and most NSFW, I saw a guy on Gone Wild or a similar subreddit in the corner of the room. I don't go to parties anymore. Honestly, I've heard of stories on college campuses with underaged partygoers go a lot worse than that, so I'm glad they ran away at least. That's responsible, I think. The guy who went down after pulling out the tampon, look, man, you, you did some serious work that night. That dude deserves like a medal or something. He did not let anything get in the way of it. And for the last one, come on, man. Come on, why are you looking at- what? During a party? There's so much stuff going on, you don't- Alright. Story 12. I went back to school at 32, and there was this hot 25-year-old I used to flirt with every day before and after class. One day, we meet up to get some food before class, and she casually mentions she has a husband. After class, I'm walking her to her car, and it starts raining. And she's just like, we should go sit in your car for a few minutes. We get to my car and start chatting, and she says something like, You seem a little rough around the edges. Like, you might be down with people who like to, um, live alternative lifestyles that other people might be judgmental about. Turns out her and her husband were swingers who had a big group of younger swinger friends. And her birthday party was that Friday. I got invited. So I show up and, mind you, I'm an alcoholic who's sober at the time, so this was awkward as hell for me to not be able to drink. But I guess she had been crushing on me big time and all her friends knew who I was. It gets wild around 10.30 when two people start banging on the pool table butt naked. People are rolling on Molly and there's whippets being passed around. Another chick spread eagled getting played with and eaten out on the couch. Around 1am, I'm tired as hell and totally sober. I don't know anyone and I don't know how this swinger thing works, so I'm pretty sure I'm not gonna get laid, so I start talking about leaving. But the homeowner is like, BS, take your clothes off, that hot girl right there wants to give you a blowy. And sure enough, I turn around and there's a pretty attractive chick my own age sitting on the couch with her top off patting the seat next to her for me to come sit down. To wrap up this long-winded story, I did exactly that. Sat down, introduced myself, got naked, got a BJ on the couch in front of a few dozen people. Some other girl came and sat down on the other side of me, put her leg over mine and started playing with herself. I should mention that there was a big bowl of rubbers in the kitchen and literally everyone I saw, including myself, was playing safe. Later, I ended up going upstairs and banging this other girl for like an hour while another couple watched and pleasured each other. I didn't end up leaving until 7am. My abs were sore as hell and I was tired as hell. And there was still a literal group banging session going on in one of the bedrooms when I popped my head in to say goodbye and thanks. Imagine six people all getting off each other and politely stopping to say, Bye, nice to meet you, thanks for coming, drive safe. And then going right back to doing what they were doing. It was a trip. Well, that is something. I gotta say, a lot of this sounds fine. I'm glad they're being safe and everything. It sounds like they had a lot of fun. That being said, would not recommend whippets, personally. 
The high it gives you is through depriving you of oxygen, which, if you don't know anything about biology, pretty bad thing. So yeah, if you had to stay away from one thing in this story, I would recommend that. They seem really harmless at the time, but it's not in the long term. Really, really don't recommend it. Story 13. Our CEO had a Super Bowl party at his new giant house for all of the company employees. There were probably 30 to 40 people there. As the night goes on, everyone is pretty drunk, and he's that type of guy who loves to party and is handing out shots all night. Then one of the new guys we just hired can't hold it anymore and pukes on the back patio. Crowd freaks out and the CEO walks up and tells him if he will eat it off the ground, he will pay him $100. Puking guy looks at the disappointed look on his wife and then turns around and says, I'll do it for a thousand. CEO busts out a thousand dollars cash. I guess he just walks around with it. A spoon appears out of nowhere and he proceeds to eat it off the ground. Crowd freaks out. CEO tells him he would have paid him 10000 Worst part is, Monday morning the CEO fired him, saying, We can't work with people that would do something like that. What the hell? Story 14. Went on a camping trip with my then boyfriend and three other friends. One of the guys had just broken off his relationship, so we expected a lot of healthy drinking to take his mind off things. Well, stuff went sideways. We were all drinking and having a good time, but he got absolutely smashed and started screaming across the lake. We were right next to lake properties and he was letting out guttural screeches like a banshee. Then he whips out his dong and starts peeing. So we all got a hold of him and put him to bed before someone called the police on us. Fifteen minutes later, we're sitting around the campfire and he's back, wailing like a banshee. This time, however, he's completely naked. This guy is 100% blacked out to the point where I don't think he even knew where he was. He starts spinning around and peeing like a sprinkler while we desperately try to talk him down without getting in the line of fire. Eventually, the bravest among us, not me, grab a hold of him and lead him back to the tent where he subsequently screamed himself to sleep and peed all over his sleeping bag. Story 15. I used to collect money from everyone that wanted to party, and then I would use the money to organize the party. I was in a Goodwill, and they had a frickin' giant box of plain white t-shirts, and another of plain white boxers. They were all unused, donated in the big boxes. I asked if I could buy both boxes for a hundred and got them. Then I bought alcohol, mostly vodka and Everclear and a couple kegs of beer. I bought a ton of fruit and juice. I bought two kiddie pools and filled them with watered-down juice. Soaked peaches and vodka and bananas, too. Had a few watermelons with a hole cut in the top and the rest of a bottle of Everclear plugged in each one. Party day rules. Men in boxers, women in t-shirts. Got a bob for a peach if you're a dude, banana if you're a chick. Then you can party. Totally frickin' nonsense idea that didn't work at all. Except to get every guy and girl there totally messy, sticky, and frickin' destroyed. Nudity everywhere. Even prude people had some sort of naughty bits showing. So basically everything worked out exactly as intended. But those peaches and bananas were hard mode to get out, which made everyone get even more messy. I gotta say, OP, I don't know if your definition of prude people is the same as mine. Prude people I know probably wouldn't go to a party like this. Like, at all. But I guess OP just lives on the wild side, what can I say? Sounds like everyone there was pretty on board with what was going on, so I can't fault them for it. Seems like they were having fun. That being said, I'm sure a lot of you listening have been to some pretty crazy parties, and I'm bound to see at least one story in the comments, aren't I? If you got one, just throw it down there. I'll take a read of it. With that aside, thanks so much for watching, have a great day or night wherever you are, and I'll see you in the next one.